distinguishing amongst the mass densities that are associated with soil is one of the most common points of confusion for students. We essentially have three mass densities. The mass density of the soil, the mass density of the solids, which are the grains or particles, and the mass density, so-called dry. So this is for the soil, this is for the solids, this is the so-called dry mass density. The mass density of the soil is the mass of the soil divided by the volume occupied by the soil. The mass density of solids is the mass of the solids divided by the volume occupied by those solids. Remember, the solids are the particles. The dry mass density is unusual in the sense that the subscripts do not match. This is the mass of solids divided by the volume occupied by the soil. So, this mass of soil is the mass of solids plus the mass of water plus the mass of air. And this volume of soil is the volume of solids plus the volume of water plus the volume of air. Now, we know that because air has such a low density, we can neglect this term, which is the mass of air. But, of course, air can occupy large volumes, and so we have to keep this one intact in the formula. Mass of solids over volume of solids. We cannot really expand this. This stays as is. So I'm just going to repeat it here. This, which is the dry density, is the mass of solids, which cannot be expanded, right? But the volume is the total volume, the volume of soil. Volume of solids plus volume of water plus volume of air, like over here. Here I have a marble. It is a particle made of, looks like glass, okay? The mass of this particle is the mass of this solid I measured to be 1.3 grams, okay? The diameter of this little marble is one centimeter. The volume for a sphere like this is pi d cubed over 6, 0 0.52 or so centimeters cubed, okay? So, this volume that I just calculated is the volume of solids, because that is the volume of the solid. Mass of the solid, volume of the solid. This is the mass density of this solid, which is 1.3 grams divided by 0 0.52 centimeters cubed, which is 2.5 grams per centimeter cubed. That's the density of the material that makes this particle. Now, here I have a little container. I calculated the volume of this container to be 26.33 centimeter cubed. Okay, so that's the volume of this. Now, I'm going to place in here 23 of these marbles. So you can see the container is full of them. And put the little top on it. Right? You can see the container. This is now a soil. And this soil is made of grains and air. There is no water in it. Okay? So it's a dry soil inside this container. Now the question is, what is the density of the soil in there? Okay, so it's really a first order approximation because the particles are really large and the container is really small. So we can only fit some kind of crystallographic um, organization of particles in here. But it's a reasonable approximation. So let's find the density of the soil. That would be rho, right? This is the volume that is occupied by all the grains, and the voids in between the grains, which are full of air. So the air and the particles, or grains, occupy this volume, which is the volume of the container. The mass is simply the mass of solids, because again, there's no water, and we always assume that the mass of air is zero. This is equal to what? Well, we have 23 particles 
and the mass of each of them is 1.3 grams. Therefore, the total mass of this soil is 29.9 grams. So the density of the soil in here is 29.9 grams divided by 26.33 centimeters cubed, which is 1.14 grams per centimeter cubed. Now notice what happened. The mass density of solids, which is unrelated to the actual material being a soil. Remember, the mass density of solids is the density of the material that makes a grain. The mass density of the soil is lower. Of course, because part of the volume is occupied by air, and air has no mass, or very little mass, right? We assume it to be zero. And therefore, the density of a soil composed of particles, of course, is always lower than the mass density of the material that makes each of the particles. In this case, it's 2.5. Let's continue with the following. I have right here a little container with 10 grams of water. That is to say, 10 cubic centimeters, because the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. So I'm going to add this water to the soil. All right, let's say that all 10 grams are in there, even though some of it remained on the sides of this container, but let's say that the 10 grams are in here. Is the soil saturated? No. We can easily see that the water does not occupy all the voids. That's okay. So now we have a moist soil. Now let's see what the density of this soil is. This is a moist soil, moist. The mass of the soil is the mass of the solids, which we found to be 29.9 grams, right? Because there's 23 of these particles, plus the mass of water, which is 10 grams. Mass of air, zero, okay? The volume is the volume of the container. Of course, the soil is filling the container. That volume is 26.33. So the density of this moist soil is 1.52 grams per centimeter cubed. So what happened? Adding water to the soil increases the density because water has a higher density than does air. So this is the density of the dry soil and this is the density of the moist soil, a little bit higher than that, but still lower, still lower than the mass density of the mineral that makes, or the material that makes each of the grains in here, the mass density of solids. Finally, we come to the dry mass density. The dry mass density is the mass of solids divided by the volume, total. So let's calculate the dry mass density of this moist soil. Now, you may be confused by that statement or question. How can one calculate the dry density of a moist soil? Well, one can. You just follow the instructions associated with its definition. The mass of solids is the mass of particles in here, which we found to be 29.9 grams. What is the total volume? The total volume is this, the volume of the container, 26.33. This happens to be the same as this, obviously, 1.14 grams per centimeter cubed. The dry density is the density of the soil if you remove any water that it may have, okay? Which is this case right here, the case of our soil that was dry, meaning when we calculated its density. But yes, you can calculate the dry density of a soil that is moist. You just ignore the presence of the water, essentially. Which one is the highest of the three? The highest always for soil is rho s. Then the mass density of any soil that is moist or saturated, like for example in this case right here, moist 1.52. That's the next one 
meaning the next highest one. And then finally, the dry density. If the soil is dry, then the dry density and the density of the dry soil are the same. Okay? Hopefully this makes sense.